is known as the toughest man in the world. Presenting Andrew the Brick World Tosa. What is up, my friends? How y'all doing? This is your boy, Sosa Pones, coming at you with the Card Counter Movie Review by Martin Scorsese. There will be light spoilers in this one, but I promise you I'm not going to be ruining the movie for anybody. I absolutely solemnly swear it will not happen. So even if you don't want to be spoiled, you should stick around and listen to what I have to say because I'm only going to whet the appetite. But if you don't want to be spoiled at all, here's your official warning. Before we go ahead and get started, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and select the all feature so you can see all my future content. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. And please smash that thumbs up like button, leave me a comment and support the messed up YouTube algorithm. Also helps smiley faces, algorithm comment, you can literally comment that. Share this around with everybody that you know too, because lots of people were interested in this film, at least from what I saw online, and consider joining my memberships on YouTube. Or if you don't want to do that, support YouTube. There's also lots of options like you can do my Venmo or Cash App or PayPal or anything like that. All that would be highly appreciated, just for you even considering. Get on with it! All right, let's go ahead and get started. What do I have to say about this film? Some good, some bad, but I'm honestly going to say mostly good things about it. Is it the best film I've ever seen in my life? No, but I don't think anyone was expecting it to be. I think it's just another good Martin Scorsese film. Now, this movie definitely takes some twists and turns. It doesn't go in the direction that you think it's going to go at all. Now, when it comes to the a actors, Oscar Isaac turns in a stellar performance. He finally gets to show his acting chops. He gets a few moments where it's just dead silent. He gets to put on basically a guitar solo if he was a mag magician, and he gets to go off. And he does a pretty phenomenal job. It's not like Alfred Pennyworth off of Batman levels, but it's pretty darn good. It's within the same league. Like, that's what it reminded me of, is those special Batman scenes with Michael Caine. He does such an amazing job. That's my favorite kind of the series, is the great Christian Bale part, and he's a big part of it. But, man... He does some awesome acting work. And who would have thought that after playing in such roles as Star Wars, now, he didn't have the most important role in Star Wars, even though he did have an important role. So I guess he was able to recover from it, unlike everybody else besides, you know, Han Solo. But it's just kind of ironic that, you know, he started out in Star Wars and it bombed fantastically in the Disney trilogy, but he's actually coming back strong. He's not letting that define him, and I appreciate that. I like that about him. You hung up your cape and your cow, but you didn't move on. You never went to find a life. To find someone. Alfred, I did find someone. I know, and you lost them. But that's all part of living, sir. But you're not living. You're just waiting, hoping for things to go bad again. Remember when you left Gotham? Before all this, before Batman, you were gone seven years. Seven years I waited, hoping that you wouldn't come back. Comment who your favorite Batman portrayal is in the comments. I would appreciate that. We'll get a nice little conversation going. Very heated subject, but let's all stay civil. Tiffany Haddish, I know, surprise, surprise, I actually liked her in this role. Now, the only reason I don't like her in some other roles is not her fault. I actually think that she can be a good actress, that she can be funny. It's just, unfortunately, the Hollywood uh, elite are now running the show, and they're all made up of Dems. They're all made up of the blue people, and they always cast her in the most R-word. If you catch my drift, sorry, you got to watch out for the YouTube algorithm. The people who hate other people for their skin color, they always cast her in the most stereotypical roles that make her sound so annoying. And just, you know, the loud, annoying black woman, you know, that a lot of people hate. They make her play that role all the time, but they actually give her something better within this role. And I liked her in it. I've always wanted to like her because I think she has great potential, but she was never given the opportunity to shine. And she actually gets to in this one, but she still maintains her blackness, which is the right way to do it. You don't go far out with the stereotypes. You keep it still yourself, but you still know how to be able to talk normally. Perfect example of this is people like Steve Harvey. He's amazing. Still keeps his ethnicity and still keeps his cultural swag and the way he talks. But he can still talk normally like other people and not be stereotypes. And people absolutely love him because of that on Family Feud. And I absolutely love him too. Ty Sheridan, he does a good job. It is what it is. William Dufoe, he actually is now a cult classic kind of guy ever since Spider-Man especially. People just absolutely love him. He's become a legendary status in a lot of people, just like Ben Kingsley. But yeah, he doesn't play too much of a role. 
but he does have a significant part of the role, but he only plays a couple scenes within it. So if I had to describe this movie to be perfectly uh, like honest, like in a good way, the way I would describe this movie is like, ominous ominous yes ominous it's kind of a mystery bag like i said before throughout the entire movie and then when it gets real you're like whoa but then it twists away again but i actually enjoyed it even though it seemed kind of off focus at times like it was really enjoyable now the one criticism i will say probably my only criticism for this movie is that the dialogue is repetitive they just like repeat things over and over and over i guess trying to make a dramatic points and it was so unnecessary like the dialogue if you cut out a lot of that repetitive dialogue it would shorten the movie because the movie's about two hours long and if you reduce that dialogue you would cut it down to an hour and 40 minutes and it would be perfect the dialogue would be mwah, so good but they don't do that that's my number one complaint is the runtime because they put too much dialogue in there that wasn't necessary at all like several points within the movie they're like repeating stuff they're like you want to go okay let's go you want to go right all right then let's go oh my god it drove me nuts but i understand they're trying to be dramatic they're trying to drive the point home they want it they think that it's good acting and it, it does hit home it does have an emotional impact but it's not worth it we're waiting for the story to carry along and they're just like talking about nonsense and just like, uh, but other than that, I don't really have any other big complaints about the movie. One of the best things about the movie is it's ominous. I know I'm using that adjective again, but it's, it's appropriate. It's music is excellent. I love music. It's very important to me within movies. And it has, it's not like a suspense thing. It's not like a psychological thriller. Like it's not that kind of movie, but the music it plays is like the psychological thriller suspenseful kind of air in it so that's the kind of vibe you get from the music and even though that's not the type of movie this is it fits very very well it's a lot like the end scene with hannibal which is a great series you should watch that you will be so glad even at the end great ending because most good seasons you know take too long it only lasts like two or three and then it ends and it's a great ending with beautiful music and stuff absolutely love that when you want to come to psychological thrills that's the way to go but that's the music that it reminded me about i get every chance i get i stick in this little bit of music because, <laughs> even though it doesn't have much to do with the review because y'all need to see it and because it's so freaking awesome So basically this movie revolves around the fact that Oscar Isaac William Tell spent about eight and a half years in prison because he committed horrible war crimes of torture against the Afghanis trying to be able to save American citizens from terror threats. Now I'm not exactly sure why they made this part of the plot point or what my thoughts are on this very thing to begin with. Because Oscar, Mr. William Tell, has PTSD from all the things he's done. He lives with incredible guilt, and he doesn't even want to have a girlfriend until Tiffany Haddish. And he finally only gets the balls up to be able to do it because of Kirk, Mr. Ty Sheridan. But I'm not exactly sure if his guilt is there. Now, I don't know what it's like to serve. I don't know what it's like to go through all those horrible things. I've been through some horrible things, but I don't understand that much. I don't understand what they went through so maybe it's one of those things that i could never even begin to understand and shouldn't even give my opinion on but basically he feels guilty about it and he was the fall guy because he was in pictures and everything like that of all these horrible atrocities happening and he ended up serving eight years his rank military rank didn't save him william dufoe mr Ma major john was his captain who taught him everything but he stayed out of the spotlight knowing that if all went if it all went bad he would be able to get out of it and he actually did the same thing to mr ty sheridan kirk's dad and that's why mr kirk in the movie wants to get back at william dufoe and he wants oscar mr william tell to help him but william is trying to basically make 
Kirk's life better so that he'll forget this stupid endeavor. But Kirk ends up, you know, not listening to him, and the fallout from that is pretty steep. And I'm not going to spoil everything for y'all, but basically that's the synopsis of the movie. And it, it it's not really preachy, I would say, but it does seem just a little bit preachy. It's basically trying to say that, you know, oh, of course, torture is bad, but like whenever... I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it. Maybe I sound horrible for this. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm just talking out my butt right here. But y'all let me know in the comments whether you agree, disagree. I know we're going to have a wide variety of opinions on this one. But a lot of those people that they did capture back then and get Gitmo and everything were terror people. There's no doubt about that. And in lives for sure were saved by these interrogation techniques. Now, does that justify it all? And especially, does it justify doing it to innocent people? No, of course not. Especially the innocent people who might have gotten caught up in that. How many were innocent? I don't know. I know there's a lot of guilty ones and a lot of terror people, but I'm sure there were some innocent people who got caught up in it. But I don't know. I can't help but feel it's worth it. That it's one of those necessary evil things that you have to do to protect your family and country. And I'm not exactly sure if I would feel that guilty guilty about it or they they should. Again, I don't have a clue. I don't know, but maybe we have some veterans. I know a lot of veterans follow me. Maybe y'all can tell me. And I know di even veterans have differing opinions on this. So I'm not exactly sure if the movie's message, which was basically trying to, you know, you know, basically make victims out of the Afghani people, which there were some, but as like a group, especially with everything going, everything going on in Afghanistan right now, like literally with Creepy Joe messing everything up. I don't really, it's probably just bad timing because they obviously made the movie before all this happened, but like it doesn't seem appropriate considering the time and everything that we know now, like people are regretting the way we left and it's just a whole mess. So I'm not exactly sure if this movie just has incredibly bad luck and timing or what its message exactly was, but basically it just shows the importance of family within the movie and tries to get off this preachy message and surrounds it with the card counting thing because he learns how to count cards within prison and it's it, it's interesting because they literally explain how it all works but it, you have to be such a genius and practice so many times just to be able to understand it let alone get good at it and i it makes me want to go and see the movie again and again buy the dvd and repeat it so i can possibly learn from myself or at least understand the logistics of it because they explain it to you but it's so much information that you just like whoa it overwhelms you and you feel like you have to go back and listen to it a bunch of times in order to be able to get the sustenance of it so that's good on them it has a lot of repeat value and you know a lot of dvd sales and people who are interested in this kind of thing but basically the card counting thing was just a plot that was designed to basically make this kind of preachy message and it wasn't like preaching in a bad way like i said before but i'm not even sure if it's really well placed i'm not even sure if it's really that great of a message it definitely has its validity but i see the other side of the coin too so i'm not exactly sure it, it really didn't come off as woke to me it just came off as maybe ill-advised especially considering the time that we live in and maybe only seeing one side of the coin and not seeing the other perspective so I don't know. I don't. I really don't know how I feel about that. But with that being said, it has lots of twists and turns, lots of good acting, lots of emotions and everything, and you feel invested within the movie. And I, I liked it. I, I recommend you all go and see it. So, I mean, if you did see it already, let me know what you think about it in the comments as well. And like I said, consider joining my uh, membership thing. You know, there's options to do one-time payments. But if you all, uh, uh, also in the link in the description, first comment too, is a whole bunch of options along with joining in order to be able to do it over and over again every month and if i could get a even a dollar from everybody who likes this video then i'd be able to do these videos full time and bring y'all even better quality content out there so hopefully y'all will consider doing that and follow me on all my social media platforms too like facebook twitter instagram links that i mean description and first comment too do all that subbing liking bell on all sharing commenting all that great fun stuff i can't wait to see what y'all have to say and i'm going to play the last little bit of the batman clip just for y'all's personal enjoyment and then there then there should be some uh tabs that pop up on the screen of other content that I think y'all will enjoy. Make sure you check out the rest of my channel too. If none of those tickle your fancy, you want to check those out. But yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for listening to me rant. Go and see the movie and let me know what you thought about it too. And that's basically it. Thank you for listening to me rant. I'll see y'all later. Go and see the movie. Enjoy. Peace out, my friends. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the day. I had this fantasy that I would look across the tables and I'd see you there with a wife. Maybe you couple of kids 
You wouldn't say anything to me, nor me to you. But we both know that you'd made it, that you were happy.